Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we are going to be doing a video where we compare Rise of Kingdoms versus Call of the Dragons, but not from the traditional sense. I'm actually going to be focusing more on the points of interest that I found more appealing as a competitive player that drew me to Call of Dragons over Rise of Kingdoms. So, Buckle up, it's going to be exciting, as always, because what can I say when you're the bomb.com, you just always got to risk it to get the biscuit players, if you know what I mean. Okay, number one is going to be summoning behemoths. So behemoths is something that you can do uh, in the game where you are actually able, and we got some videos too that we can show you here in a sec, but let me, there we go. As an example, you have Behemoth Lairs, right? Which is kind of the comparison to Holy Sites. The difference, however, is that with Lairs, you are actually getting a member limit increase, right? With things like Sanctums, Altars, Shrines, etc. Uh, it's mainly giving you a percentage buff. Some type of uh, research, building, troop attack, HP, etc. In COD, not only are you getting a buff, but you're also getting a member limit increase. Then we get to actually summoning the behemoths. This is number two. Being able to summit the behemoths, and this is actually pretty cool, right? So let me show you this one. And what we're gonna do here is I have to now pull up my awesome video because there's no real-time fights that are happening right now. And I'm too lazy just to go and include some of this. So this is what we'll do. <laughs> I'm gonna show you, let me just move the webcam up a little bit. Bam, block my face out. And you can see here that this is some of what, and we're just gonna replay this a minute or so, right? So bam, now you can see the bear behemoth there's a dire bear and there's a hydra this movie it's actually so dope but what you can see here is that the dire bear has an aoe range it has its own active skills you can summon these whether it be for attack defending usually this is done on strongholds so for example it would be your flags passes forts etc and this is just another on field tool support option that you have that you can use from your alliance then we get to number three Number three for me is going to be the graphics, right? So this is something that I think is really... And, and again, let me preface by saying that Rise of Kingdoms came out some odd years ago. Was it 2018, 2019? And Call of Dragons is releasing, at least when this video comes out, in a couple days. So the hope is that the game that's newer should have better graphics. I just want to state that because I often hear this argument where people are saying, oh, well, COD has so much better graphics than Rock does. Well, to be fair, it should, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, if it didn't, I would probably be slightly disappointed. Um, now, when it comes to if we're just talking about how it looks from a terrain perspective, right, this is what you're getting with Rock when you're just kind of comparing. And then if you look and you zoom in a little bit, you can see that, you know, again, I mean, it's, it's decent. It's not bad by any means. But then if we go and compare what we have with COD, right, which as I have to appropriately switch stuff up here. What do we have going on right now? Where's my bump, bump, bump? Here we go. So then if we scroll all the way back, you can see, and we'll just start high, work our way in. You can see that one even if you're just comparing the map differences, right? Rock is more symmetrical, so it's more of a square type kingdom. In Call of Dragons, it's more asymmetrical. So you're looking at a more, uh, kind of almost looks like the Lord of the Rings kingdom, right? Or the world, if you will. And this, again, you can tell is not symmetrical at all, right? So again, you have different proportions that are throughout, but you also have good detail, right? I mean, again, you have... Right, you have, a, I guess you could say overlay text, right? You have other kind of sub, I guess you could almost call them districts. And the detail looks pretty good when you're looking at it from afar. And then you start zooming in a little bit more and you can see, well, this isn't that bad. I mean, again, there's some nice effects and uh, uh, visuals, or I should say, God, what's the word I'm looking for? A full I guess, effects. We'll just stick with that. That sounds good. <laughs> and then if you go in a little bit more, right, you can see the movement here of one of the wonders. If I zoom in a little bit more, you can see the trees are moving, the shrubs are moving. Again, you can see even just the units themselves have really good uh, interactions for, and uh, like this would be the example of uh, what your barbarians, right? But in this game, it's your darklings. They would have different creatures and some of the different uh, levels actually have different ways that they will interact with you when you're fighting them. So, Yes, there's a lot of passion that's exploding. Now, let's get to the next one here, which is going to be on-field tools 
that you can use such as keeps and barricades, right? This is a this is a difference, and we'll touch on as I have to scroll over here so I can show you these. If we zoom in, you'll see that you can actually place these things called barricades on the map, where they will effectively slow down units that pass through them uh, until they end up getting to where a barricade essentially isn't. You also have friendly units and flying legions that can move past them without having to take those uh, slow decreases on their march speed. And then you also have keeps, right? Now, the cool thing about the barricades I want to point out, you can use those in front of passes, behind passes, in front of bridges, behind bridges, on ramps, on choke points. There's a lot of good tactical use for those. Then if we go to the other side, I want to show you guys keeps. And keeps are, uh, in short, just think of it like a bunker. Right? This is a bunker, it has a radius, and if you step in the radius, you'll get attacked. You can only put range units in here. These are great for if you want to put them on, like in this position, this isn't bad. You kind of have this keep on somewhat of a choke point, at least if it wants to go, excuse me, this way. You can also put them in a certain range within a pass, and you can put them, again, on ramps in front of or behind bridges, or on opposite sides, we should say. So there's really good tactical and strategic use for keeps as well. Uh, the next one that we're going to go into is artifacts. So artifacts are pretty cool, right? So as an example, if you see this unit that I have here, you can see that as I move the unit around, I have, and I, I don't know if I can just summon, let's see if I might be able to do a quick thing here for us, and psh, 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 bam, so short walk. But uh, maybe we'll come back to this in a sec. But in short, really all this, what this is, is that the artifacts are an active skill that you can use on your marches slash legions that we call them. And once they, once your artifact skill has generated enough rage for ones that require it, you can then use it on the field. Now, to show you just a couple examples of some different artifacts that you can use, you have this one, which is a legendary artifact. You can see the visual here. It might be a little small unless you're full screening, but the short version is that it is an AoE arc damage skill. You have this one, Staff of Spring, which will, which is a single target heal. So if you use this on a friendly unit, it'll instantly heal them. You even have an AOE healing one, with, uh, which is not that one, which is, where's my Tier of Arbin that I always have to remember? Here we go. Tier of Arbin, right? This one will cast four friendly legions uh, or up to four friendly legions and it'll heal them for a percentage you have uh, even uh, where is it the harley quinn you even have uh, an artifact like this which is called harley quinn mask and this basically can taunt darklings dark creatures and behemoths that we showed earlier right so for example you could go up to a behemoth if you have this on one of your legions and you can aggro taunt it and then pull it away from the action therefore reducing the amount of damage that's being put onto all of your alliance members troops that are out there in the field uh, and so Artifacts just offer another layer of depth. There's even artifacts that will make your unit invisible, right? We've seen cav units on the field that are using those to flank and get behind in certain positions, pick off stragglers, uh, as an example. So, really, really cool stuff. Then we get to the next one here, which is kind of the casual and the competitive talk. This one is going to be focusing on points that really hammer down on the casual competitive feel. So, for example, when you're conducting PvP, let me show you, if we can... And let's max this out so I can give you the visual aid here for how the differences look. So and let me move my cam down just a smidgen. There we go. Okay, so here you can see with how the PvP is playing out, the big difference here really is that there's ranged play, right? Outside of the other things that I've mentioned, you have this ability to attack units from ranged. Where in Rock, from my understanding, at least at the current moment, you cannot do that. And though the way that the interaction of Rock is, you know, you're basically hugging the unit, you have to go and attack it face to face where you're right next to it. In COD, you actually have range play. So you're able to have good, do things like having good position. You're able to single target fire focus in more efficient and effective ways. You can spread out to where you're reducing the amount of unnecessary AOE damage you're taking versus how much you're inflicting. These are things that really factor more into and also aid more of that organization and coordination play from the alliances. So this is something that when you're thinking about how you can impact the game, even as a free-to-play player, we'll touch on that in a little bit more, there is more value, in my opinion, and more ways that you can contribute, and also an additional, like we talked about it before, an additional layer of tactics, of tactical and strategical play that you can apply to COD. I like to look at COD essentially like an RTS game. It's like StarCraft meets Total War or Total, uh, what is it? Total War Rome, right? 
where it may not be a pure traditional RTS, but there are a lot of traditional RTS elements that are in the game. And that's something that I really enjoy watching, playing, and participating in. Then we get to the next one, which, and really, I can just kind of keep playing this a little bit more. The big focus here is that you're actually seeing more of an open field focus on this game versus what you're seeing in Rise of Kingdoms. For all intents and purposes, you're still going to rally, excuse me, you're still going to rally passes, you, but you're not going to rally flags, right? So you're not rallying flags in Call of Dragons. Instead, your, your units are actually building the flags and, and or destroying flags and forts as well and keeps from outside, right? So you basically have to move your unit close to the flag and they'll just start hammering it, whether to build or to destroy, which also means that your units can be attacked when they are out there in the open field. Then we end up getting to the next one, which is the healing system, I think is important to touch on. So as we now move back over to the PC client here also, which is lovely, uh, you'll be able to see as we go to the, the deal the differences in healing. So in, in Rock, you have to use resources to heal, and someone will have to let me know otherwise if there's still, and I'm just actually going to load mine up here because I'm, I'm not actually sure if this is still the case or not, but uh, right, used to be able to use helps for your healing as well. I have to see if I actually even have any units that require that I don't think they do so yeah I don't I wish I could test it real quick but I can't uh, so I'm just going to focus on the important stuff that I can tell you with certainty so that is that in rock you are using resources to heal troops there are no healing helps that can be done in call of dragons for your troops in addition you also get free healing right so as an example you see there's free healing and resource healing you get a percentage and a number of healing that you can do per a 24-hour period, right? You can see this here from your total healing that you're able to do. It also says choosing free healing will not cost resources, but will take some time. So they're basically giving you two options. You can free heal, but then you can also still pay resources to heal as well. All right, then we end up getting to probably my last bit here, which is the free-to-play versus pay-to-win aspect in COD. And then we'll talk a little bit about merging, right? So for me, the big thing is that the reason I think COD and truly believe COD, I should say, is more free to play friendly is because, and I'll just give you one example. If you are a ranged unit and you are attacking a spender's infantry or cav unit, you are not going to take a pure one-to-one -one damage based on your account's current level. You will most likely do, or not most likely, but you will in turn do more damage to that unit because they're only giving you counterattack damage at that point. Uh, and so in these types of situations, right, it's kind of what they've done in order to not make it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love for it to be a little different where it's basically you have to be attacking the unit to actually be doing damage on it. And there's not like some type of handicap system that is automatically counterattacking or attacking unit just because it's getting attacked. That's how I'd love to see it. But how it works now is that it still lends you a lot of value because one, you have range play. And then you have this ability where you can attack units and not take a pure one-to-one -one ratio damage back. Again, that is subjective and a small asterisk there because it does depend on how much stronger someone's account is over yours. Even if uh, the system is set up where you're doing more damage because the counterattack damage is, redu is reduced damage when you're fighting those types of ranged versus non-ranged units, you still could get overpowered, right, if you have someone who, you know, is already T5 versus your T4, just as an example. But the fact is, is the opportunity is there for you as a free-to-play to have greater impact on the fights and on the wars in the game because of the range play that you can apply, and then also because of the way that you can engage with ranged versus non-ranged units when fighting. Then let's lastly talk about how the merging system works. So there's not a traditional KVK at the moment in Call of Dragons. If anything, it's more of a forced KVK. And I'll just show you a quick example of that as we look at some accounts. So you'll have these standard kingdoms, one, two, right, all the way up to 30 kingdoms that they have out now. And then you'll have merged kingdoms. And how that works is that, in, and this is, again, how, we've, how we are seeing it happening now, is that traditionally it's going to be every four kingdoms uh, is the hope and expectation. Again, that could be subject to change. Every four kingdoms will merge together after the first season. A season runs about 75 days, and then you'll get merged with four other kingdoms into somewhat of a forced KVK. There's no starting zones or anything like that. It basically is what you're looking at right now. You will play on <clears throat> what could be the same map or a new map for one they're developing currently. 
And you start out, you just basically pick your own zone one region. So you could arguably have multiple people that'll start off in the same region or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you kind of have to just play it out and figure out what you're going to end up doing for there. Uh, for that new uh, season, right? Which would be season two going into your first Merge Kingdom. And then really it's, you know, a matter of waiting to kind of see what's going to happen next, given the game is still early, right? There is some level of uncertainty on knowing what will happen. But what I can tell you is that even if you are able to look past that, and some people might be turned off by kind of being forced into somewhat of a KVK or a map merge with other kingdoms, what I can tell you and I can definitively say is that the game, when it comes to the PvP engagement, the opportunities for it being more free to play friendly even if it's not you know a ginormous amount it still is more and that is those are the things again along with what i've listed previously that has really sold me on call of dragons and that's why i prefer it to rise of kingdoms again i think rise of kingdoms still attends or adheres to its own audience and i of course i'm not saying anything to the degree of you should just quit playing and play this but i do at least want i at least wanted to highlight some of those differences in a once no pun intended but in a different or varied capacity than probably other videos that you have watched focusing on the things that i think really stand out when it comes to kind of the competitive versus casual type players that or or if you are a competitive player what type of competitive levels you can get in call of dragons versus what you're currently getting in rise of kingdoms so that is going to do it for me. I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you enjoy some of the differences? Do you not enjoy some of the differences? Let me know anything and everything in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, I will catch you later.